Hey, what's up, Gun Nuts? It's Ferrari Steve, and today I'm gonna walk you through installing a short reset trigger kit in a Sig Sauer P220. You can follow these exact same instructions to install an SRT kit in a P226, 227, or 229, or any of the kind of 22X family. Um, it's all gonna be the exact same process. In fact, it's gonna be a little easier in the 226 because the double stack is a little wider, you got more room to work. I'm gonna do the trickier one on camera, uh, why not? Um, I should have done the easier one, but I already did that today so that I could do kind of a before and after to compare. But before we get any further, let's do a quick safety check. I've already removed the magazines, so let's do a manual and visual inspection of the 226. It's clear. Lock the slide open on the 220. Manually and visually inspect, and we're clear. Now you can see I've already removed the handle from the 220, that's just a couple flathead screws so we can get inside and save some time. But before we go further, let's talk about why you would want to install an SRT kit. Now you might hear people refer to this as installing the short reset trigger. That's not technically correct. We're not changing the trigger. The trigger is the stock trigger. They do sell a short trigger, but that's just trigger geometry. It doesn't really change the function of the trigger action. The short reset trigger kit changes the function of the reset only on the, um, after your double action shot, the reset to your single action and how much play there is before the single action shot goes. That's the only thing that's gonna be affected by this short reset trigger kit. I'm gonna prove that in a minute. Uh, we've got my little tester, so um, we'll do a trigger pull before and after just to prove that point. There are some people talking about on some of the forums, well, it does this, it does that to the trigger pull. It doesn't affect the trigger pull. We're gonna prove that. But let me show you what it does do. So this is the stock, um, stock sear and stock safety lever, which is really all that's in the kit, and that's uh, all that's doing the, the upgrade inside. So we, uh, we know we're clear, we're gonna point in a safe direction. I'm gonna pull the trigger for my double action shot. Bang, keep the trigger down, and then we'll go for the trigger reset. Listen, make it real close. Okay, we've reached our reset position. Now watch, I have a lot of play after I've reset from my first double action shot, bang, Back to this reset position. That's a lot of play there, and then I get all the way to the end, and then it bangs, right? Whereas, once I've installed the SRT kit, I get my first shot, bang, rack the slide. Basically, what that does is cock the hammer and push the trigger bar down, in addition to pulling another round in, but for purposes of the trigger, it's pushing the trigger bar down and uh, cocking the hammer. Watch. There's our reset. Now, when I pull, I don't have any play. I am right there where it's gonna go bang again. Watch. My reset is short, but really no shorter than the other one. It doesn't feel shorter. Where I feel the difference is when I pull, I don't get any play. It goes bang immediately. I don't get that wah, 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 wah stuff, right? Now let's show what the stock trigger pull looks like both before and after. And I'm gonna put the P226 down here. I'm gonna keep the kits. I'm gonna move them out a little bit too for now. Let's test the double action and single action trigger pull on the 220 just to see if, it, if it's affected at all. All right, let's get in position. We'll do three. Actually, I'm gonna move my thumb so I don't affect it with that trigger. Nine pounds, six ounces. Let's try another one. Nine pounds, 11 ounces. Nine pounds, 10 ounces. So our average is nine pound, nine ounce. So let's remember that, I'm gonna write that down. Nine pound, nine ounces. Now let's test our uh, double action shot, right? Let's, uh, this is gonna be tricky. Here we go. Oh, didn't go to the reset. There we go, we got my reset. Let's go right here. Let's clear that, I'm gonna leave it at the reset. Oh, 
Okay, five pounds, four ounces. Let's get, uh, let's get reset again. Four pounds, eight ounces. And five pounds, three ounces. So kind of all over the map there, but the average is around five ounces, okay? So we've got 9.9, .9, essentially a 10 pound double action, five pound single action pull. So that's what we're gonna check again after we get done with this upgrade. So let's, uh, let's look at what's in the kit. All right, so the 226 kit and the 220 kit are pretty much identical with the exception of one extra part in the 220 kit. Now, these are the stock pieces that I took out of the 226. So I'm gonna compare the stock pieces to the SRT kit pieces so you can kind of see what's happening. There is a third piece in the 220 kit. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. I'm gonna put it aside, we'll mess with that in a second. But here's what's in the kit. You get a new sear and you get a new safety lever. So here's the stock sear out of the P226 Mark 25. And here is the sear out of the SRT kit. Notice this little tab. This tab is where the magic happens. And in fact, this tab corresponds to the tab on the stock safety lever. This is out of the, the stock one out of the 226. This is the new safety lever that's gonna go in with the SRT kit. You'll notice this little tab on the bottom is not on the new safety lever. This tab, which is what interfaces with the trigger bar, it's this tab on the sear that's now gonna be interacting with the trigger bar. And that is where this cleanup of the, uh, the reset happens. So we need to take these ones out of the 220 and put these ones in. Now, like I said, there is one extra piece. I'm gonna put the stock pieces away. There's one extra piece that you get in the 220 kit. And it's right here, it's a new decocking lever. Now, as far as I can tell, it has nothing to do with the trigger reset. I can't see at all how it's gonna affect any reset. What it does do, however, let's uh, pull the slide off for me to demonstrate this. What it does do is here on the stock decocker, when I put it down and it comes back up, hear that? That tick you're hearing is it's making contact with the frame, metal on metal. And it's actually starting to chip away some of the finish there on the frame. That's no bueno. This new decocker, the only difference I can tell, I've looked at all the geometry, I can't see any difference except for this little camel hump right on top, right here. See that? That little hump is gonna make contact with the inside of the frame before the top of the decocker has a chance to impact the top of the frame here and you won't scratch. So I think that's kind of a cool feature. I don't know why that's in the 220 kit and not in any other kits. Maybe they assume the other ones don't have that problem. I don't know. But uh, you can put a 220 kit in a 226 or 227. Uh, the sear and the safety lever seem to me to be identical. If uh, anybody has better info, please put it in the comments. But as far as I can see, and as far as I've heard, um, you can put the sear from a 220 SRT kit and the safety lever in a 226, 227, whatever. This might be another, uh, this might be a good time to point out another point. If you do this, you're gonna void your warranty unless you are a SIG armorer. If you install this kit, if anybody other than a SIG armorer installs this kit, you're voiding your warranty. So just be aware of that. It's not a, a hard thing to do, um, but you should be aware of that just in case. So let's get going. Um, we are gonna install this at the same time. So if you're doing this on a 226 or a kit that doesn't have this, just you know sit back and watch and learn something and then uh, catch up when we do the rest of the stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is take out the spring. We're gonna be working here on the sear area and if you are cocked, uh, go ahead and decock it. It's gonna be easier uh, to do this decocked. So uh, Glock tool is gonna come in really handy. I like to use that, and I also like to use a little screwdriver just for this part. You're gonna to wanna to get in here where this sear spring is. All right, make sure I can see that with the light there. There's the sear spring. It's under tension by uh, being held in place underneath this little pin. So you're gonna to wanna to push that spring just so it slides over that pin and sits up here. It's not gonna go flying anywhere. It's captured by the sear pin, um, but you're gonna to wanna to take that tension off. Now grab your Glock tool and just slide that pin. The pin's right here. 
not this roll pin. You want this pin here. It should not be held in really tight at all. It should come out pretty easy. So now when you pull that, some stuff might fall. That's okay. Pull that pin, nothing fell. I'm gonna put the kit down here. I like to line up my pieces like that. Um, if it doesn't come, I mean, it might fall out and go click. Oh no, what'd I do? Well, no, don't panic. You didn't do anything. Your spring is there. The sear is here. The, um, the existing safety lever is probably inside here. Just kind of wiggle that out or, or shake things until it falls out the bottom. That's the great thing about having the handles off is you've got access to that. So these are the old pieces. We're going to put them aside. We're not going to need those anymore. And again, those look identical to the ones I took out of the 226. Now, um, you don't need to take off anything else uh, as far down here. You know, the, uh, some people try to take out the, uh, the takedown lever and the, and the block here. You don't need to do that. I do, however, like to remove the uh, trigger bar spring. This is an old style trigger bar spring. I am going to be upgrading that. I'll do a separate video when that spring gets here. Um, there's a new design for this spring that comes up and curls around and doesn't uh, rub on your frame. Uh, the newer guns, you'll you'll see the newer style spring. This older style spring, this is a 2001 uh, 220, so I will be replacing that eventually, but put it aside. I like to do that because I like to get in here to work, especially on the single stack. On the 226, you've got more room and it might be easier, but I'm going to need to gain access there, so moving the trigger bar spring is um, is a good thing to do. Now comes the part where you can ignore if you don't have this other decocker. Let's go ahead and put this decocker in, right? So I'm going to grab a pair of needle nose pliers. You only need that for this part if you're doing this. Take the spring tension off just very lightly. Remove this spring just again, very gently. You never have to force anything here. And my finger is in underneath holding what's called the seat, the decocker seat in place. All right, so pull the decocker. If you accidentally drop this and the seat comes out, that's not a big deal. Here, here's the seat. It's kind of L-shaped like this. You're going to want to slide, put your finger in underneath, slide the seat back in, and just kind of wiggle it around until you find the right spot. Rotate it until you feel it kind of click into place there. You should see the little bit of tab through this window. See that? And the seat is, uh, this, this opening for the spring is coming diagonally down. Place your new decocker. The way you can tell it's new is it's got this little camel hump on it, right? Just place that on top. This back part sits on top of the of the tab there from the seat. Grab your spring, place it in like this. The little Z goes inside there. Hold it down with your thumb, grab your needle nose, and again, very gently, you don't have to press that very hard to get that in place, and just press it down with your thumb, make sure it's in. And your decocker should be working. Now look at that. When I let go of the decocker, it's out. It's out a little farther from the frame. And it's not making contact with the frame at all. That little camel hump is now what's making contact. That's a that's a pretty cool upgrade. I don't think it affects the uh, the trigger reset at all, but it's a nice thing to have, and I'm glad to have it in the 220 kit. And the 220 kit and the 226 kit are the same price on Amazon or Midway or Top Gun Supply. Any any reputable uh, gun supply sp place should be the same price. Now let's get to the good stuff. So start watching again if you got a 226. Again, make sure this is decocked. Here's where it gets tricky. This sear goes in next, and this is a good opportunity to kind of lube things up. I actually already pre-lubed these, but um, if you use your SIG lube or frog lube or whatever, get, get some lube on it. It's nice to have these slick before you put them in. I don't like putting dry parts in a gun, especially in these parts of the gun. All right, this is gonna be tricky on camera, but I'm gonna try my best. Stick your finger up in there. It's kind of a little landing platform. I like to cheat with my Glock uh, tool, and I pick up, I pick up the sear using these two holes, right? So slide the Glock tool in, and then I'm gonna pass it underneath in this window to my finger. And I'm gonna rest it on top of my finger. Now the reason this is tricky, especially in the single stack, is because that tab uh, makes things tight inside. You can't drop it in from the top because that tab will stop you. In fact, even on the stock one, the tab stops you. But you're going to want to move this back and slide it up on top of the hammer. Now, the sear goes in like this. This channel, uh, this exposed channel here, should be sitting up top. And see how it's hooked like this? That drops in like that. But you can't drop it in from the top. You kind of got to wiggle it from the bottom. So I'm balancing it here on my, on my finger inside there. I'll reach my Glock tool in. And I'll push my, my trigger bar forward to get room. And I'll grab the two little holes there. Now, here's where it gets tricky. That trigger bar is what's making... 
that trigger bar and the little tab on the sear is what's making things tricky and making things tight. So you're gonna kind of want to wiggle it around. You might drop it a couple times. I will probably drop it a couple times. I found it helps to have the trigger pulled. So if you've got a thumb handy, pull the trigger down and you're gonna just need to wiggle and find the sweet spot you know, maybe rotate it so gravity is your friend and it's trying to rotate into the right spot for you. And you're just going to have to, again, don't force it. Just look for that spot where the sear can slide past that trigger bar. Ooh, I'm close. There it is. I got really lucky on that one. Really, the trouble is here. This is the little tab right here. And this is the trigger bar. And you're going to want to slide it. I don't want to lose it, so I'm going to try to hold this in place. I'm going to stick my Glock tool in the pin side and hold it in place there. Now I can show you what's tricky. This little tab, that's that's the tab that's on the side of the sear right here. Let me get the screwdriver right here. That's a real tight fit to get past this trigger bar. So sometimes you might have to lift the trigger bar up a little bit. Don't pry. Don't, don't do anything with any force, but just give it some room so it can slide past that and into position. Now... The good trick is to hold the sear into position with the Glock tool. You don't Once you've got it here, you don't want it sliding out and falling down. So the next thing you want to want to do is get your safety lever. So pull out your Glock tool just enough to slide it down so it's like a key going in a car like that. It just slides right down in and then peek in the side to kind of find where the hole is and then slide it through. Now your safety lever is being held in place by your Glock tool. Now I take the pin and line it up here with the Glock tool and I push it through. So now the lever and the sear are being held in place by my pin, but I need to put my spring in there. So push the pin back out. I'm still holding the sear and the safety lever in place with this left side of my pin. Drop your spring in just enough to let the pin slide by and slide the pin back through and push it into place. Now, we'll set the exact pin position in a minute. Just make sure it's holding everything in place, right? Um, it's impossible to put this spring in wrong because the way it's designed, even if you flip it one way or the other, the right side is where the lower uh, spring end is gonna be, and the left side is where this top one uh, sits. That's the one you're gonna have to force back down underneath that pin to create spring tension. Do not forget to do that. If you just put it in and put the slide back on, it's gonna pull up and bend this spring. You're gonna to have to buy a new spring. Don't do that. So make sure you get this last step here. Um, push it down and underneath, and now you are good to go. This entire assembly is back together. Flip it over. Don't forget your trigger bar spring. This is the old style again. It hooks in here. And again, it's not under a lot of pressure. Do it very gently. Hook that right there. And everything's back together. Believe it or not, you can test whether or not the uh, reset is any different without putting the slide on. Here's how you do it. So I like to check the decocker, make sure that's good. Everything looks pretty good. All right, I'll move my takedown lever. Here we go. Double action bang. Now we don't have a slide to rack, so we talked about what it does at the beginning. It actually pushes down the trigger bar click and cock the hammer come back there's our reset boy a little bit just a touch but nowhere near the amount of motion that was there before All right there's our there's our single action bang let's try it again push down the trigger bar cock the hammer come back for our single action reset and when i pull i don't get that sloppy play i'm ready for single action bang that's really nice Let's put it back together. Oops, forgot to put my tape down. Back down. There we go. All right, here we go. Here comes our double action. Bang. Rack the slide. There's our reset. When I pull, I have, boy, I feel a little bit of action, but not much. Not much at all. I'm right there. It's a huge improvement. Double action, reset, single action. I don't get that sloppy play that I used to get. Now, let's test our trigger pulls. Let's see if we made any difference in the trigger pull, right? We were at about a 10 pound double action and we were at about a five pound single action. So here we go. 
Let's test. Uh, let's test our double action. Ten pounds, fourteen ounces. Let's try it again. Nine pounds, ten ounces. Nine pounds, eight ounces for an average of ten on the nose. Um, now again, I should be holding it more steady and all that, but again, we didn't see any difference. We got 9.9 .9 last time and 10.0. A couple of those last ones were, and we'll do one more just for fun. 9.3. So, you know, that could just be variability in our, in our testing. Now let's try, um, our single action, shall we? Four point fifteen. Three point thirteen. Well, maybe, uh, maybe we've learned something here. Maybe our single action is a little bit uh, lighter. Four point seven. Let's do. Let's do a couple more just to see how it goes. Four point nine. So average of four point seven. That's a little bit lighter than the five pounds we tested before. But again, uh, this isn't super scientific, and I could be wiggling around. But substantially very close to uh, what it was. It's not a massive amount of change, if any. Right. Um, I didn't see. I didn't feel any difference, and didn't measure any difference on the double action. On the single action, not statistically significant, if any. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit lighter, but again, not, not significant. Where you're going to feel it though, is in the feel. I, I feel that difference. That is a big difference. Now you, you may have to change how you shoot with this. I know there are some reports of guys short stroking, um, you know, when they're getting used to that uh, shorter reset, but, um, I think it's a really worthwhile upgrade. Um, Again, if you do it yourself, you're going to void your warranty. So either wait till it's out of warranty or have a SIG Armor do it. I mean, the part itself is, um, you know, 28, 30 bucks maybe. Uh, you saw how easy it was to do. Some dude in his basement doing it. Um, it's not a hard, a hard upgrade to do. I do like the fact if you got the 220 that it comes with this new decocker, and that's just kind of a cool thing. So. Thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe if you like what you see. You want to see more gun videos from me. Uh, remember, get out there and get that SIG dirty. A dirty SIG is a happy SIG. Um, practice, get good, understand your gun, take it apart, learn. Um, but get some bullets down range because the first time you have to use your gun, you do not want that to be the first time you have used your gun. This is Ferrari Steve saying thank you and stay safe out there.